Hello and welcome to our Math Talino tutorial. In this video, we will discuss how to find the limits of a function without the use of a function table. We will be using a simple trick which actually generalizes a lot of limit theorems in calculus. So, to determine the limit of a function as x approaches to a, simply substitute x equals a to the given function. You get it right. The simple trick that I am referring to is direct substitution. However, you have to take note that this trick applies only if the function is defined at x equals a. When we say defined, it means after substitution, we must not obtain a value that is undefined, indeterminate, or an imaginary number. So, to illustrate how this trick works, let's have some examples. Find the limit of f of x is equal to x squared minus 9 as x approaches to 3, which can be written mathematically as limit of x squared minus 9 as x approaches 3. We now apply our trick by substituting x equals 3 to the given function. Why x equals 3? It is because we want to know the limit of the function x squared minus 9 as x approaches to 3, as indicated in our given expression. Now, we substitute x equals 3 to the given function. Take note that the given function is x squared minus 9. So, we have 3 squared minus 9. Simplifying, we have 9 minus 9, since 3 squared is equal to 9. Simplifying further gives us 0. Therefore, the limit of x squared minus 9 as x approaches 3 is equal to 0. Very simple. Now, let's proceed to the second example. Evaluate the limit of x plus 3 all over x minus 5 as x approaches negative 5. Applying our trick, simply substitute x equals negative 5 to the given function. So, we have limit of x plus 3 all over x minus 5 equals to negative 5 plus 3 all over negative 5 minus 5. Simplifying both numerator and denominator gives us negative 2 all over 10 because negative 5 plus 3 that is equal to negative 2 and negative 5 minus 5 that is equal to negative 10. Getting the lowest term, it is equal to positive 1 all over 5. Therefore, the limit of x plus 3 all over x minus 5 as x approaches negative 5 is equal to 1 fifth. For our next example, find the limit of 2 as x approaches 1. Notice that the given function is a constant function which can be written as f of x is equal to 2. Recall that in a constant function, whatever real number values that we use for x, the y value will still be the same. In this case, the y value is still equal to 2. So, the limit of a constant function f of x equals c as the value of x approaches to a is equal to c. Therefore, the limit of 2 as x approaches 1 is equal to 2. This is true for all constant functions. Now, for our fourth example, determine the limit of the square root of 1 minus 3x as x approaches negative 9. Applying our trick, substitute x equals negative 9 to the given function. We have limit of the square root of 1 minus 3x as x approaches negative 9 is equal to the square root of 1 minus 3 times negative 9. We simply replace the x in our given function by negative 9. Simplifying, we get 
square root of 1 plus 27, which is equal to the square root of 28. Now, square root of 28 can be expressed as the square root of 4 times 7, which can be simplified as 2 square root of 7. Therefore, the limit of the square root of 1 minus 3x as x approaches negative 9 is equal to 2 square root of 7. For the fifth example, find the limit of x squared minus 3x plus 3 raised to the power of 3. We do the same trick. We simply substitute x equals 0. So we have 0 squared minus 3 times 0 plus 3 raised to the power of 3. Simplifying, we get 0 minus 0 plus 3 raised to the power of 3, which is equal to 3 cubed. Simplifying further, we obtain 27. Therefore, the limit of x squared minus 3x plus 3 raised to the power of 3 as x approaches 0 is equal to 27. So, for our sixth and last example, given that f is the function defined by f of x is equal to 2x plus 1 if x is not equal to 5 or 3 if x is equal to 5, find the limit of f of x as x approaches to 5. Our given function is an example of a piecewise function. If you have just encountered this function, let me discuss to you how it works. Notice that we have a function 2x plus 1 if x is not equal to 5. This means that we are going to use this function whenever our x is not equal to 5. For instance, if we want to substitute x equals 4, we have to use this function rather than the second one. Also, notice that the second function is a constant function 3, and as indicated, this function applies only if x is equal to 5. This means that if x is equal to 5, the corresponding y value will be equal to 3. Now, going back to our given, we can still apply direct substitution by having x equals 5. However, to which function do we substitute x equals 5? Let us recall that in finding the limit, we are not concerned with evaluating at x equals 5. Rather, we are after the values that are closer and closer to 5. So, in this case, we have to use the first function, although we will be using x is equal to 5. Remember that what we are doing here is just a trick. We always have to go back with the definition of a limit whenever we encounter a piecewise function. So, we have the limit of 2x plus 1 as x approaches 5, which is equal to 2 times 5 plus 1. Simplifying, we get 10 plus 1, which is equal to 11. Therefore, the limit of f of x as x approaches 5 is equal to 11. That's all for now. We will discuss in our next tutorial the cases where the function is not defined at x equals k and a lot more. So, I hope you learned something. Until next time!